Teddy Roosevelt called the presidency a bully pulpit. And what he meant by that, he meant it was a superb platform for public influence, and he really used it for that. And what presidents say in public always influences the direction of culture and world events, sometimes for years to come. Now, of course, analyzing their words in hindsight is a whole lot easier than being president and being in the spotlight, giving immediate answers to antagonists, which is something presidents have to do every day. But after action analysis can be a helpful exercise for anyone. So let's try to imagine some more nuanced answers for those presidential pronouncements which have been made in public. And so if you'd like to explore this with me as an exercise in my series, Presidential Answers, then subscribe here. Now today, let's analyze this exchange of the first presidential debate of 2020. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland? Sure, are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what are you, what are you, you look, what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists well, and right like me to condemn? White proud supremacists boys. and right proud, proud boys. boys. Stand back and stand by, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left, because this is not a right-wing problem, his this own is a left-wing. First, take a look at the substance of the president's answer. Look at his words. 12 seconds of a response. And these words did position him as a peaceful anti-racist leader who accurately challenged a false narrative and redefined it as a national security issue. But could he have been a little bit more clear on the ways both of his opponents were making false narrative accusations at him during that time? Yes, he could have been. And could he have been a little bit more clear for the record on exactly what he believes about race? Well, yes, he could have been that too. Now, if he had been able to invest more than just 12 seconds in this answer, what might have been helpful to say in hindsight? And so here's my version. I would begin by saying something like this to the moderator, moderator, Chris, you're cajoling me into an answer that fits your narrative. And I have several duties as a public leader and a constitutional officer to keep the truth before the American people. And I'm sorry to have to say this of you, Chris, but is it not racist of you to label people white supremacists because they disagree with your left leaning political positions? You're accusing defenders of property in Kenosha, like Kyle Rittenhouse, of white supremacy. Do you hear what you're doing? And you're doing this simply because they try to protect the private property of innocent citizens and to protect their own lives. Is this the new definition of white supremacy that you're pressuring me to condemn in my answer? The property protectors in Kenosha did not add to the violence there, Chris. They prevented arson. And they may have de-escalated violence at several flashpoints on those nights that you're referring to. They were there to protect the city from violence, not to cause more violence. And it's, and it's highly irresponsible of you, Mr. Biden, to shout out at me and to single out a group like Proud Boys and to smear them with the label white supremacist when they clearly state on their website that they are anti-racist and they welcome men in their ranks from every visible variation in skin color. And so gentlemen, our nation needs to stop the inflammatory bickering about skin color and begin speaking rationally about race and civilization and civility. And why does it, Mr. Biden, why does it bother you so much that the Proud Boys advocate gratitude for the massive accomplishments of Western civilization and Western law and order? Why is that? We should be proud of the West's victories over slavery and hate and racism. And we should all be in agreement that we hate racism for the same reasons. And we should be working together actively to put an end to it. We should get racist talk out of our national dialogue along with political correctness. And Chris, okay, to answer your question, I'll tell you, and I'll go on the record, I personally hate race supremacy of every kind because it's racist. 
And I condemn all forms of white supremacy or any other color supremacy because that idea is also rooted in racism. No form of racism is ever harmless to our society. And the relative inferiority of, or superiority of an individual can never be judged by skin color, but only by the content of his or her character. I hope we've learned this by now. Now, Chris, you also throw in the word militia into your leading question like it's some sort of a pejorative when it occurs six times in the Constitution that I am sworn to defend. You should be pointing out that lawful militia groups at the community level have been a part of American liberty and history for over three centuries. And today, neighborhood watch groups and fully integrated watch groups, fully integrated ethnically, and there are many of these groups, they can go a long way to keeping the peace and helping the police when violent anarchists come around to loot and burn and kill and destroy what our ancestors have built in these local communities. These armed neighborhood watch groups can then easily be ordered into the militia structures of each state under the proper state constitutional authorities, if and when it becomes necessary. And if you men keep fueling these fires of hate, that day may come sooner rather than later. So stop inflaming the conversation and instead speak about lawful community defense against the anarchy you can see developing around you. And Joe, in conclusion, I would just say this. Would you be willing right now publicly to retract your false accusation about the Proud Boys? And then I would just leave it right there at that. And so putting the pressure back on them to acknowledge that they've been wrong, even in the way they've posed a question to me, and then try to educate the public a little bit, and then put the burden back on Mr. Biden to correct what he has just so erroneously said. And so if you would like to explore with me questions and answers from history, recent history and even older history, you can send me questions at questions at jeffreybotkin.com and we'll dig into these together. Thank you.